Hello and welcome to designing a flyback DC to DC converter. In this video we will derive the flyback topology from the inverting back boost topology, speak about the operating principle, go through the steady state analysis and explain the right half plane zero. My name is Brigitte Hauke. I'm boost and back boost controller application manager in Texas Instruments. This video is the second one of a video series which concentrates on the flyback converter design and gives some guidance for practical issues. So let's start the fundamentals of flyback converters by deriving it from the basic topology of an inverting back boost converter. As discussed in the first video, the basic inverting back boost converter consists of the three components switch, inductor and diode and the absolute value of the output can be higher, equal or lower than the input voltage. But it is negative compared to the input. Let's do the first step and exchange the inductor with a shorted transformer. We still have a bug boost converter. In the next step we disconnect the primary winding from the secondary winding, which transforms the topology to a flyback converter. As it is more difficult to drive a high side switch, we put them to the low side. Now we can redraw it in the final step to the known flyback schematic with the transformer dots on the opposite side. If we now have a look on the V-in to V-out relationship, the difference to the inverting back boost topology is coming from the turns ratio of the transformer. With this, we can achieve wide voltage ranges as well as isolation between the input and output voltage. Let's have a look how the flyback converter operates. Like with every basic topology, we have two operating modes that are dependent on the current in the magnetic component. In continuous conduction mode or CCM, the current in the transformer is during the whole switching cycle positive and never gets to zero. In discontinuous conduction mode or DCM, the current in the transformer gets in every switching cycle to zero and stays there for a while. So in continuous conduction mode, when the switch is on, the input voltage is applied across the primary side of the transformer. The current in this winding rises. At the same time, the voltage on the secondary side of the transformer is negative, so the diode blocks current and the full load current is coming out of the output capacitor. As soon as the switch opens, the current in the transformer has no path to flow on the primary side, so it is transferred to the secondary side and the voltage across the switch rises to V in plus the reflected output voltage. The current changes the voltage across the secondary winding into positive. The diode now conducts, charging the output capacitor and supplying the load. Be aware that the voltage seen on the primary side transistor can get very high at the moment when it turns off, as the diode needs some time to turn on. Looking at DCM, the only difference to CCM is that the transistor turns on while there is no current in the transformer, as it decays to zero when flowing in the secondary winding. When there is no current in the transformer, parasitic ringing can be observed at the drain to source voltage of the transistor. Let's now focus on continuous conduction mode. Here you can see the input to output relationship in continuous conduction mode again. When we have a look at the current flowing in the transformer, it can be observed that current is flowing either in the primary winding or in the secondary winding, but never in both at the same time. This means that we call the magnetic in a flyback almost always transformer, but in reality it is a coupled inductor. This is important to keep in mind, as this causes a fundamentally different design of the magnetic. A flyback transformer needs to store energy and therefore needs a magnetizing inductance, which we try to avoid in a real transformer. 
Now let's go on with analyzing the steady state of a flyback to calculate and define the component values. First we calculate the duty cycle from the input to output relationship because input and output voltage as well as output current or load are known parameters. To get a more accurate instead of ideal duty cycle, the highest known loss in the system is added which is the assumption of forward voltage drop in the diode. With the known parameters and an estimate for the diode forward voltage drop and the expected efficiency, the currents and voltages on the primary side can be derived and out of these then the parameters of the primary side components. On the secondary side, the average current equals the output current this, the ripple current and the peak inverse voltage are needed to select the diode. So the steady state analysis gives us all formulas to calculate and select the components for the power stage of a flyback converter. When speaking about a flyback converter in continuous conduction mode with a fixed frequency operation, we have to be aware of the right half plane zero. Where does it come from? Let's assume the converter is in steady state but suddenly shall deliver more current to the load. To deliver more current to the output we need to increase the current in the transformer and this means longer on time. In a fixed frequency converter longer on time means less off time. So the amount of energy delivered to the output in this cycle is less compared to the one before. If now the converter would react on this additional reduced power delivery, it would command another increase in duty cycle causing even less power to be delivered. So the reduced off time and power delivery of a fixed frequency continuous conduction flyback converter reduces the dynamic response of the flyback in continuous conduction mode as it needs to react not instantaneously on the duty cycle change again. This behavior is called right half plane zero because in the frequency domain you get a gain boost and phase lag by it. So we want to compensate the converter at a lower frequency than the right half plane zero frequency. The formula shows that the frequency is inversely dependent on the output current. So worst case is at maximum output current. Calculate the secondary inductance with the square of the ratio from the primary inductance. For example, if the secondary winding has half the turns of the primary, the inductance has to be divided by 4. For more details, have a look at this paper from Lloyd Dixon. This video showed the fundamental operation and calculations of the key parameters of a flyback converter. Further videos will go through the design procedure of a flyback converter, show some flyback transformer basics and discuss frequently asked questions. You can find further information for example in the E2E forum or ask your question there. A lot of details can be found on the product folder. You find flyback EVMs and users guides, Excel design calculators and a lot more tools and collateral. In addition, a lot of reference designs can be found at this link. Thank you for listening.